Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, I may well, I may well have had a rather traumatic childhood, which has resulted in me having to become a kind of a kind of robot with no feelings, doesn't even have dreams. But guess what, Mr. Pusin? Guess what? Guess what? Okay, you are a far right thug. Yeah, that's right. You're a far right thug, and you're bald, and you're a right ugly bastard. So there. <laughs> Hello, 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 and welcome to this edition of The Jolly Heretic. Now, today, I would like to talk about the five key reasons why, uh, <clears throat> if there is going to be a Prime Minister that is going to essentially provoke nuclear war, it is someone like Keir Starmer. The psych someone with the utterly messed up psychology of Keir Starmer, the boring, highly repressed man, is precisely the kind of person that I can see provoking Mr. Putin into nuclear war. But before that, could you please, please, please subscribe? Could you subscribe here on, the, on YouTube and leave a comment and leave a like and hit the bell and all that? And could you subscribe on my Substack, thejollyheretic.com, where if you like what I do, you can support me for the cost of a pint of beer a month and where there is uh, interesting interviews, where there is, uh, there, 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 there's films that I make, where there is content I daren't put on here and where, as I say, if you like me, you can, you can support me for the cost of a pint of beer a month. Also, could you remember to watch me on Mondays? I live stream at 7pm UK time. But most importantly, please, please, please subscribe here on YouTube. It really, really, really helps me if you do that. Okay, back to the video. So, <clears throat> uh, Keir Starmer, I think, if, if there is going to be a Prime Minister that is going to provoke someone like Putin into nuclear war and into destroying the entire universe, it is him. Now, let me look at why. Now, first of all, we have to ask ourselves, what kind of person would actually press the nuclear button if pushed? What kind of person would initiate nuclear war? Well, you could argue that it is someone like Putin. Uh, Putin is an authoritarian. It might be argued that Putin has uh, narcissistic traits. One could argue that you have to have narcissistic traits to have got that high, uh, particularly in the kind of bandit world, one might say, of Russian politics. He is, he is the big man society. He's the big man leader. So we can see how he a narcissistic traits probably relevant. Um, one would have to have a deep feeling as a nation of insecurity, uh, a, 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 a deep feeling of vengeance, a deep feeling that something had to be righted. And one could argue that this is indeed the case uh, with Putin with regard to Russia's uh, feeling of paranoia about the expansion of the West and all that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> and so there has to be sort of, as it, as it, as it were, uh, something something missing. One would have to be provoked, of course. Um, and so you could, and, and one would have to feel that one was insecure in 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 one's power, that the things were not going well economically, things were not going well in general, and therefore something dramatic had to be done. So all of the conditions are there for Russia to potentially be pushed over the edge into using nuclear weapons. Now, this being said, uh, what kind of opposition would be the opposition that would mean that they might actually press the button and use the nuclear weapons? What kind of opposition would mean that they wouldn't be frightened to do so? It seems to me that Keir Starmer uh, is exactly that kind of opposition. And let's face it, Keir Starmer is basically the leader of the Western world until Donald Trump takes over in January. I mean, no one, no one is in charge in America. America is just chaos. Joe Biden is not in charge. It's just the people behind the scenes that are in charge. Um, Starmer has the honour of being the symbolic leader of the West, effectively, until Trump takes over. Now, what's wrong with Starmer? Well, as we know, Starmer is rigid and predictable. He is the uptight, rule-following, boring bureaucrat. Now, because he is rigid and predictable, uh, you know, this and, and utterly, utterly inflexible, uh, this, is, this is a serious problem. It means that the Russians know exactly what he's going to do. They understand his psychology uh, as, as though he were something out of a science textbook. There's nothing unpredictable about Starmer. There's no element to which he is a kind of a madman, like perhaps Trump is, where you've got to be careful because he might whip something out of the bag that's amazing that might stun you and you haven't prepared for it. There's nothing like that. This is an entirely dull man. 
So they know roughly what he's going to do in response to anything that they do. So this makes it, it makes it much easier for them to, let's say, uh, nuke some element of Ukraine or whatever it is they might be, they might or Poland that they might be interested in doing, and they will be able to understand what he will do. And if they understand that what he will do is not uh, retaliate then, of course, it makes it much more likely they will do so. So that's the first problem. The second problem <clears throat> is that, as we have discovered, with the riots that were set off by the vicious murder in Southport by a first-generation, a second-generation Rwandan immigrant of three innocent little girls, um, he can't communicate. He's bad at expressing himself. He has spent his childhood not expressing himself. He has never been allowed to express himself in response to highly emotional and difficult situations. So he's extremely poor at doing so. And he gets it very, very, very wrong when he does so. He makes mistakes. He causes grievous offence. He shows a lack, even though he might not be lacking in empathy, he shows a lack of empathy because he doesn't know how to properly, properly express himself. He is a poor communicator. Now, this is a problem in an extremely tense diplomatic situation because it could mean that he could say the wrong thing. It could mean that he could inadvertently deeply offend Putin. Uh, deeply upset Putin, deeply upset the Russian people, with the result that Putin, who is mindful maybe of using nuclear weapons, just thinks, OK, sod it, the de facto leader of the free world is going to hurt my feelings, bugger it, you know, I, I will show him, I will show him. So that's the second problem with Star Starber, he can't, he can't communicate, he is the person who when people are angry and upset and frightened because an immigrant uh, is now been found out to be a Muslim fundamentalist, jihadi, sympathising immigrant, and it's all being covered up, uh, murdered these three little girls, people were legitimately frightened about this and furious about this. He is the one calling them far-right thugs. He is the one jailing them for expressing opinions which they express in the heat of the moment. He is the one jailing them for stopping and just taking a photograph of a riot. He is the one doing all of this stuff while standing by and doing nothing while, uh, while, while uh, other groups within society riot that's what he does so he is bad at communicating he's bad basically at, uh, at, at getting on with people and so you can see that this would set off someone like Putin in addition to the fact that he can't be seen as mad thirdly um, it's very easy to dehumanize an utterly boring person because let's face it there is a degree to which an utterly boring person isn't human an utterly boring person is kind of like a robot uh, Starmer is incapable of coming across as though he has any genuine emotion other than fury. I'll move to that in a minute. Um, he is in, it's very hard to sort of empathise with someone like Starmer. You could empathise, I mean, you may think that Boris Johnson is a liar, but at least he comes across as human. He comes across as the kind of person you can get on the pub with and have a drink with. The kind of person you can get on with. John Prescott, on the day I'm making this video, has just died. He comes across likewise. He may be a bit of a thug, but he comes across as a human kind of a person that you could imagine going down the pub with and having a laugh with. Starmer is not like that at all. He just comes across as a robot that, from a very early age, as he says, has not gone down those dark alleyways of emotion and reading poetry and understanding himself and reading novels and having a favourite book or anything like that, any self-analysis. He just comes across as a robot. And so it's much more difficult for someone like Putin to sort of sympathise with someone like that and therefore much easier to just dismiss him and think, I don't care if I upset him by setting off nuclear weapons or whatever, because he's a robot, so who gives a damn what he thinks? So that's the next problem we have. He's easy to dehumanise. It's not good to be easy to dehumanise. As we have seen, the next problem is that he is extremely insecure. And this came out, this came out in the in the riots, as we saw, he's extremely insecure and extremely easily provoked and therefore extremely easily provoked into not just being a bad communicator, but into doing something stupid and saying something stupid, saying something he ought not to say, going too far 
far right thug or equivalent to Putin. So you and and thus really really provoking him and making and, and thus cutting off diplomatic relations. And, and... Are you ready for the future of the West?